You know, Chris, usually when we talk about cutting threads, we're talking about tapping a die, and that's usually metalworking. And we're talking about woodworking threads, we're talking about a tap box and a die for those. But that's not what we have here. No. What we have here is both a tap and a die. Yeah, and it's, it's designed to use your router to create threads, which I think is really cool. So kind of walk us through how, how this works and what are the different parts, because they all work together in sync. They do. First off, we're going to start with this platen, and this is where you attach your workpiece to. That, in turn, has a shaft. In this case, it's a piece of 1-5 all thread. Now, we're not locked into using all thread here of that size. We can use half inch, one inch, two inch, whatever you can fit in this jig. This little dowel here engages the threads, and that sets the pitch. So this piece of threaded rod governs our entire threading process. Exactly. Then on the back side, we have a router, and that's actually what does the cutting to make our threads in whatever our workpiece is. Mm -hmm. And that has a little bit of adjustability too, right? It does. Okay, the router is held in this jig, and we can move the router just a little bit to angle it so that we can emulate the pitch angle of our threaded rod. We can adjust the router up, and we can adjust this whole carriage front to back, depending on the size of the project that you might want to use in here. The heart of this is this bit here, and this is a 90 degree double bevel metal cutting bit, but it works just great for cutting wooden threads. It's got very little rake to the teeth, so it makes a beautiful smooth cut. One thing I think is really cool is you can cut threads on projects of almost any size on this thing. I mean, as long as you can hold it to the platen, you can cut threads. It doesn't matter if it's our smaller canisters, you can go bigger with them, you can go smaller with them. Absolutely, you can go teeny tiny, or if you want to redesign this jig, you can make a canister that big. So you're not limited to our project, which is these canisters. Any project you can think of that you can fit on this platen, it's good to go. I think we can go ahead and get cutting some threads. I think so. To begin the threading process of the canister that Phil made earlier, I've begun by attaching it to this platen. The platen, in turn, is attached to a piece of threaded rod. That threaded rod guides the router and guides our canister and determines the threads per inch that we're going to cut. Now, this is a piece of 1-5 Acme rod. So it's one inch in diameter, five threads per inch. And what that means is, with this piece of dowel engaging these threads, as I turn the platen and the canister, the canister is going to advance or retreat at the rate of five turns to one inch of travel. Our router jig can accommodate different sizes of threads. And right now, of course, I have it set for a one inch Acme rod. Now moving over here to the router, the router is set at a very slight angle. Now, if you look at the Acme thread, you'll notice that all threads, like this, have a slight pitch angle to them. And so the router, in turn, is angled very slightly so that our router bit will cut true to the angle of the threads. The router jig also slides forward and backwards, and that means I can set this for different diameters of cut if I need to make something small or something large. Before I get started, you'll notice I've made a pencil mark, three quarters of an inch, on the interior of this canister, and that's my reference to know how deep to go. I know that the plug that I'm going to thread into this is three quarters of an inch deep, so that's how deep I've made my mark. And so when I start advancing into the router bit, I'll go all the way to that line and a little bit more. Now, it's important when you cut threads not to take too big of a bite. I'm going to plan on starting light and probably going three times to get the good, stout, deep threads. But we go a little bit at a time. This router bit doesn't really have a tendency to grab, so I can go very slowly and carefully. But we always want to keep our part moving so we don't get any burn marks. So with that set, I'm going to start the router and begin the process. With the router turned on, I'm now going to advance the canister into the bit. slowly and steadily, advancing and advancing until I reach that three quarters of an inch line on the interior. When I've reached that line, I'm going to reverse direction and back the canister out. I'll then shut the router off, loosen the knobs underneath the router carriage, and move the router carriage a little bit so that I have a slightly deeper cut. I'll repeat the process and then do it a third time, leaving well-cut, stout wooden threads.
With the canister removed from the platen, my next step is going to be to take some sandpaper and I want to ease the entry into the threads. And I also want to take the sharp peak off the top of the threads. So they'll be a little bit stronger that way. When I'm done with that, I'm going to set up the router jig again and we're going to cut threads on the plug. Well, with the threads completed in our canister, it's time to cut the threads in the plug that's going to be part of the top for our project. I'm using the same platen and the same 1-5 all thread. Now, by using the same all thread, I know that the threads are going to match exactly in pitch. The plug is attached to the platen with a spacer in between. And why the spacer? Well, that allows me to run threads through the entire thickness of the plug without the router bit hitting the platen. Now, when we cut threads for the canister, I was rotating the canister in opposition to the rotation of the router bit. That's how we would normally go through any routing operation on a router table. Well, with the plug, I'm actually going to be rotating in the same direction as the router bit. So we need to be a little bit more careful about the router bit grabbing. I'm going to take light cuts and turn with a very steady hand. And I'm going to cut my threads in about three passes. Once I'm done with that, it's going to be time to remove the platen and the plug assembly, and we're going to do a test fit on our canister. So with that, let's go ahead and route some threads. Being careful so that the router bit doesn't grab, I'm going to start my cut fairly slowly, and I'm going to proceed with a little bit of caution. To cut the threads, I'll be doing it in three passes. After the threads are cut, I'll pull the whole platen assembly out and test fit our plug to the canister. If we need to cut a little deeper, the platen will be put back in and we'll route one more time. Well, here's the finished plug for our canister project. It took me about five passes with the router jig to cut the threads in. The thing to remember is, check often. We want a just right fit, so you have to kind of sneak up on it. Well, with the plug completed, I'm going to turn this project over to Logan, and he's going to finish up with the lid for our canister. Woodsmithplans.com. Hundreds of professional, high-quality woodworking plans right at your fingertips. Every single plan is presented as an easy-to-download digital package that includes pages of step-by-step -step instructions full-color photos, illustrations, and exploded views, retail sources for hardware and supplies, plus a cutting diagram and materials list. Many plans offer handy video overviews and guides. Plus, we're proud to offer our plans in both standard and metric. Everything is here, from gorgeous heirloom furniture projects to handy shop projects and upgrades, clever, cost-effective storage solutions, as well as weekend projects and accessories that are great for gifts. All fully searchable and categorized for easy browsing. Woodsmithplans.com, everything you need for building fine woodworking projects.